Hi class. Okay, so um, last lecture we covered um, uh, how a diode is, uh, works and, and how it uh, is at zero bias. And today we're going, <coughs> going to cover what happens when you put a bias on it going toward deriving the equation for the current versus voltage of a diode. Um, okay, so I left up our uh, band diagram uh, versus X. Uh, from last lecture, and I'll go ahead and, and redraw uh, our diode here. If I can draw. Okay. Let me see, okay, so here's our junction. That side is N, that side is P, here's our depletion regions. Um, so um, in this region, these are the space charge regions. In this region, you just have acceptor ions, which are negatively charged. And in this region, you have donor ions which are positively charged. And then uh, out here, um, you have you know, a whole bunch of holes. And over here, you have a whole bunch of electrons. And the way I explain what happens here is that when you brought them together, um, the holes in the P side and the electrons, you know, uh, you know they sort of like uh, go toward each other and anni annihilate each other, leaving behind these space charge layers. And you know, because the, the acceptors are negatively charged, they inhibit any further transfer uh, of electrons. And, and the same thing about the poles going that way, because light charges uh, repel each other. And so the formation of the space charge layer leads to this equilibrium situation where, you know, the way to think about it <coughs> is that I have this kind of barrier in place here due to the space charge that's keeping these holes and electrons at bay, and they can't do anything. Now, okay, um, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to start, you know, doing electronics because uh, that's what your major is, well, most of you. And so I'm, we're going to put a forward bias or a positive bias on the P side. <clears throat> Just as a, a mnemonic, I think I pronounced that right, a memory aid, um, for forward bias, the positive voltage goes on the P side. Now, um, the way to think about what happens next is that um, when I put a positive bias there, all right, it takes the electric field the built-in electric field, um, which I'll write built-in, and okay, think about it. Okay, the, the built-in electric field is pointing this way. So when I put a positive charge or put a positive bias on the P side, that puts an applied field in this direction, and so basically it makes that. So this is at zero, and this is at V. So it weakens that built-in field. And so it acts like basically weakening the barrier. And so what happens is that um, with V, barrier goes down. And now I get holes and electrons. Flowing. I mean, it's just like, I mean, you can imagine, I mean, if you had like water or something on either side and you, you lift a, a valve and, and, and so you're allowing these holes to flow that way now and bear it and electrons to flow that way now. And since um, electrons going this way is a current, you get, both of these give you a current I in that direction. Which makes sense because I put a positive bias on this side, I should get current going in that direction. 
so the the nature of current of ford bias current and diode is um is of sort of um lowering the barrier um uh the the built in barrier of the diode and um now let's um so this is at zero volt and now let's draw our same diagram and i'll explain how you draw this at um at now a um putting a voltage on and the way to think about this is that uh remember these diagrams are uh, of electron energy going up <clears throat> and so if i put a positive bias on this side it essentially lowers the electron energy on that side so what i'm going to do here is um I'm going to um, uh, draw, I mean, let me see if I can line it up. So basically, I'm going to, I'm going to draw my, my valence, or uh, my N side. So this is E sub C and E sub C B. I'll put E F there for now, and I'll have to explain what happens. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower a little bit this side. You always want to keep your band gap the same. All right, so now what I've done here is um, I've lowered, and I'm going to go ahead and put um, E up there still. Okay. And now, same sort of deal. We'll go up to, you know, our uh, depletion region. It helps in this field if you're an artist. Um, and, and do the same thing, which is, you know, do our little S thing. See, as I'm drawing this, what I'm um, what I'm striving for when I draw the, that little S shape is I want the slope there and the slope there to be. Oh, that's what's going wrong. I'm connecting with the. Uh, I'm striving to to keep. You know, it connected. So that the slope there and there is zero. See, when you draw that S, you want to like do like this, and so it comes out flat over there. And it's the same thing over here. Okay. All right, that's not bad, and and <laughs> it's not great, but um, and you can see what I've pictorially shown is because when I put a positive bias on this side, it effectively lowers the electron um, energy on that side. And so it makes the barrier smaller, right? You can see that it's smaller. <coughs> now, um, the next step is, uh, to a certain extent, not necessary. Um, but uh, I mean, because you can see what's happening here. You can see that um, basically um, this curvature now That curvature now is now what it was before, E V sub D, the built-in voltage, which I can't remember why I put sub D there, but we'll stick with that, minus the, and I'll start, hmm, did I use, uh, let me see what I did in the notes here. I used F for forward bias. And, and so to a certain extent, the picture is pretty simple, right? All I've done is I've lowered the barrier um, by amount equal to the applied voltage. It's really pretty simple to think about. Um, 
Yeah. Now, what happens when I lowered the barrier? Okay, well, okay, let's 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 finish drawing the picture here, um, the way it's usually drawn. And and you can see that um, I've drawn EF on both sides up to the space charge layers, and that's appropriate to do um, because um, to a certain extent everything's um, uh, constant in those regions. You can see they now, they now don't connect. And so what people usually do is they, they extend them like this. I can draw straight. And then that is EVF. Which, I mean, of course it has to be because, I mean, you've lowered the bending by an amount VF. And so since this is the same, and of course the band gap's the same, and this is the same, that, you know, just look at it geometrically, has to be equal to uh, E times VF. Um, when people draw these, these formula was extending into the uh, sort of junction region of the diode, um, they sometimes refer to them as quasi Fermi levels. Uh, there's no reason at this point to worry about that too much. I'm just doing it to show you that's what people normally do and how they draw what's going on. Um, but all you really need to understand about this is that I've lowered the barrier. Now, <clears throat> over here I sort of explained it, um, you know, pictorially, that when I lowered the barrier, um, put B sub F there, actually this should be E sub F here, uh, okay, let me put a line there so you, you don't, don't mix that with, let me put, uh, oh no, it's, it's capital F, I can't get away with that. All right, but it's the electric, it's not Fermi energy, um, it's the applied electric field due to forward bias in the diode. And, you know, so the way I, I sort of showed it pictorial over here is that um, that applied electric field, what am I doing? I'm backwards. That applied electric field is in opposition to the um, built-in electric field. So the total electric field then is smaller. And that's essentially what our barriers. So by applying the electric field, um, I lowered the total electric field. And so I lowered the barriers and uh, lowered the barrier. And now holes can start flooding over in this direction. And electrons can start flooding over in that direction. And both components, since electrons going this way is current in that way, gives you a current component in that direction. Now over here, the, the way to picture it is, is that, okay, here's my electrons in the conduction band. Oops, I used minus times for them, sorry. Here's my electrons in the conduction band over here, right? <coughs> and the, the, the barrier is, is very much, you know, what it looks like. I mean, this is a barrier to electrons going in this direction. And so when I lowered the, the barrier, those electrons start flowing in that direction. Now, for holes, the way to think about holes in these diagrams is that holes float. So um, over here, I have a bunch of holes on the P side. And um, since this is a, a band diagram for electron energy, uh, holes acquire energy going in the reverse direction. Um, and, and so this represents a barrier to them going that way. And you can think about, just, just think about them as floating. And so they're floating and, and there's this, this barrier here and I've lowered it and now they start flowing in that direction. So, <clears throat> However you need to think about it, just sort of more pictorial here or relative <coughs> to our band diagram here, um, just, um, you know, realize that when I applied the Ford bias, positive voltage in the P side, I lower the built-in barrier, and so holes and electrons can start flooding across the junction again. <coughs> and our job now is to quantify that. 
All right, and, um, and, and so we'll start working on that. My, my cat is, wait, <laughs> biting the uh, cord. All right, so um, how, do we, how do we quantify this? Well, um, we quantify this by first understanding what the concentrations of holes and electrons on either side are. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a coordinate system. This is x sub n, right? That's the edge of the depletion region on the n side. This is x sub p. <clears throat> and if you think about it, what I'm interested in is what's the concentration of electrons on this side? Because that's my current component, right? The electron's going over there. And the same thing, what is the concentration of holes on this side? Now, uh, there's a word for that. It's called the minority carrier concentrations. Because when holes are in, remember, this is Pn. When holes are on the on, on N material, they're, you know, they're not supposed to be there. Um, uh, and they're called the minority component. Um, for N material, electrons are the majority uh, carrier uh, component. And same thing for electrons in the P side. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot N on this side and P on that side. And that will start us along our journey of understanding uh, what's going on. Now, what I'm going to do <coughs> is um, I'm going to first draw two levels. And I'm going to on purpose draw them a little differently. And um, this is a good uh, homework problem. Um, so I haven't really, I haven't really said anything one way or the other. But uh, let me uh, let me draw this one like that, and this one just just so that they're a little bit different. This is of course x. <clears throat> and what these levels represent are. This level represents, and we're going to call it NP0. Which is, it is the concentration of electrons in the P material in equilibrium. Now, you know what that is, because you know that, that NP is equal to NI squared. I told you that was going to come in handy a lot. Um, and so um, since, since P is approximately NA, NP0 is approximately equal to NI squared over NA. Right, it's just the you know the n concentration um, in the p side in equilibrium, and you know you just sort of have to get, get used to the idea that whether it's p whether we call it p type or n type, there's always both p and n because n p is always n i squared. So there's some level of electrons even before I apply any bias, and the same thing over here. Call that p n zero. And uh, same thing, Pn0 is approximately equal to N D, uh, oh, sorry, Ni squared. Over Nd. OK, um, well, that's all great and everything. I, I basically have told you what the um, what the concentration of holes is on the P side when there's zero bias. Remember, zero here, that means zero bias.
and it's not very, uh, you know, remarkable because you know you you knew NP equals N H squared, so you knew what that was. Now, <clears throat> think about what's going to happen when I put a forward bias on on that. What's going to happen is that I'm going to flood electrons over onto that side and holes onto that side. So the concentration of holes on this side is going to go up. Now it's not only going to go up, but it's going to have a slope to it. It's going to have a variation. Um, and for no other reason, you can think of it that, you know, when I raised the uh, barrier there, I mean, holes go flooding over, naturally the concentration would be a lot higher near the barrier. So there's going to be some level, which I'll call, okay, um, in, in the notes, I, I kind of, yeah, I, uh, I kind of brushed past this, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful here. Um, I'm not going to say what that is yet. I'm just going to call it um, P sub N. And, and so there's going to be some level of, of holes now here, and it's going to go down. And if you think, of, think about it again, when you go far away from the junction, the semiconductor way out there, can't see my hand, the semiconductor way out there, um, yeah, you can see everything, it doesn't really care that there's a junction and all that stuff. And so when you go far away from the junction, the injected hole density has to eventually reach PN0. Because far away the junction is just like it's just a piece of semiconductor. All right, and and the same thing um, in the electrons. There's going to be some um, n on the p side, uh, n sub p. And it's going to go down some way, okay? And I, I don't know how it's going to go down yet, um, but I'm just drawing a curve right now, just to put something there. <clears throat> so this is what happens when you forward box. So this is zero volts, and this is plus the F, same thing over here. And you can sort of see that as I raise the bias, this kind of does this sort of thing. Okay, now. Um, I'm going to erase this part of the board. Because we don't really need our equilibrium diagram anymore. And I'll take away our little pictorial. It does lose focus, doesn't it? Um, okay. Shoot. I don't know how to fix this. Huh. Okay, what's it focusing on?
Unfortunately, I don't know how to fix this. Um, 